Happy Thanksgiving, folks. I can't wait to have a big feast today. And you know what they say, there's no better way to keep your mind healthy before gorging yourself on turkey and potatoes than listening to a sick man yap about some fun math puzzle. And so begins today's narrative. Here is an innkeeper. She's the innkeeper at this mysterious inn in a mysterious village. You know it's an inn because it says inn on the front, and you know the village is mysterious because you don't know anything else about it. But more relevant to the issue at hand is this peculiar traveler who shows up one day in this village and waltzes on into the inn. He has nothing on his person except a gold chain, which you can faintly see him holding there. This is a gold watch chain, so it's like a link. It looks a little something like this, right? It's just a link of uh, gold chains. And so his chain has seven links in it, and he wants to stay at this inn for seven days. But since all he has is the chain, that's really the only thing he has to offer the innkeeper for his stay. The thing is, he doesn't really want to pay with the chain. At the end of the week, he has a check that's going to clear, he'll have the money, and he'll be able to pay for everything then. But in the meantime, he's going to have to use that golden chain as collateral. The innkeeper agrees to accept one link from the chain per night. So for his first night, he'll have to give her one link, and for the second night, she'll have to have two links and a so on. Of course, to hold to this agreement, the traveler's going to have to cut some links from his chain. And so the question is, what's the smallest number of links the traveler must cut to give the innkeeper one gold link per day? He of course wants to minimize the damage to his chain. So remember, his chain has seven links and he wants to stay for seven nights. You may want to pause the video now and try to solve the problem. The next thing I tell you will be a sort of hint. The hint, which is really just making the rules of the problem a little bit more clear, is that you might think the traveler needs to cut most of the links. They're all going to need to be freestanding so that he can give the innkeeper one additional link per night. However, that's not required. The traveler could, for example, give the innkeeper one link one night and then take it back and give her a pair of links that are connected the next night. This way, she has one link for the first night, two links for the second night, and so on. You can see that it might not be necessary to separate all of the links to satisfy the agreement. And with that in mind, the question becomes pretty easy to answer. Here's our chain of seven links. If we make no cuts, then obviously this isn't going to work because for the first night, we can't give the innkeeper one link. We only have the option of giving her the whole entire chain, which we don't want to do because we do not trust her, because she's in a mysterious village. So then, if we can't get away with making zero cuts, the next possibility is maybe one cut is sufficient. Clearly, if we just cut a link on the end, that's not going to work, because then we would have that freestanding link, so we could give her that for the first night, but the rest of our chain would be a link of six, and so the only other amount we could hit is six links on the sixth night and seven links on the seventh night, but two, three, four, and five, we'd be out of luck. On the other hand, if we cut the second link in, then we're going to have this tail of one, two, three, four, five links, and then we would have two that are freestanding. We could then hold up the deal for the first night by giving the innkeeper one link, and the second night by giving her an additional link, but all we would have left is a link of five which is not going to help us hit the number three. So on the third night, we'd be stuck making an additional cut. But what if we cut the third link? Well, let's go ahead and try it. Here's my chain of seven gold links. I know I need to cut at least one of them. I know cutting the first one won't work. I know cutting the second one won't work. But what if we cut the third one? Well, let me do some slicing and dicing. Now, can we hold up our end of the bargain? What we have now is one freestanding link, a pair of connected links, and we have four more connected links. We then give the innkeeper the free link on the first night, we take it back and give her the pair of links on the second night. On the third night, we throw in that single link, so now she has three links. And then on the fourth night, we take all of that back and give her the link of four. This is four, which is three less than seven. And we already know with the remaining links we have, we can count up three. Give her the additional link on the fifth night. 
and then take that away and give her the pair of links on the sixth night and then throw in that final link on the seventh night. And so the traveler need only make a single cut to his precious gold chain. This leads to two natural questions. First, is it possible that we could use a greater number of links and a single cut to still solve this problem and be able to give the innkeeper one additional link each night? And secondly, if we permit two cuts, how big of a chain could we have and how many nights could we stay at the inn? The answers to these questions come down to what are called combinations. Let's address the first question first. If we permit only a single cut, is it possible that we could solve this problem with a bigger chain and stay more than seven nights? Or is seven the maximum? Well, however long the theoretical maximum chain is, after we make a single cut, we're going to be left with three things. The freestanding link, which we cut, and then the chain link on the left side and the chain link on the right side. In theory, of course, we don't actually know how long this link on the left is, and we don't know how long this link on the right is, but it would be to our advantage if they were of different lengths. That would help us achieve different numbers of nights. Supposing then that we have one, two, three different links of different lengths, we begin to wonder how many ways could we pick links from this collection to give to the innkeeper. The total number of ways that could be done, that some links could be taken from these three and given to the innkeeper, would be the theoretical maximum number of days that we could stay with just a single cut. The relevant math notation is called a binomial coefficient and looks like this, for example. This is the number of ways we could pick one of the links from our collection of three. We have these three links of different sizes. This is the number of ways we could pick one of them. It's read as three, choose one. Of course, we could also choose two of the links to give the innkeeper, so we need to add the number of ways we can choose two links from the collection of three. And of course, we also need to add the number of ways we can choose three links from a collection of three. There are formulas for these things, but for these small numbers, it's pretty easy to calculate. How many ways can we pick one link from a collection of three? Of course, the answer is three. How many ways can we pick two links from a collection of three? That is also three. How many ways can we pick three links from a collection of three? That's one. It's not necessarily the case that all of these different combinations of links result in different total numbers of links. It would depend on how we cut the chain. For example, if we cut this link that's second from the end, then we would have two free standing links. And so choosing to give the innkeeper this single free standing link and choosing to give the innkeeper this other free standing link, those are two different choices that result in the same number of links. So it does depend how we cut it, but this tells us what the theoretical maximum would be, and we see that it is seven. Thus, we know that if we're only permitted a single cut, then seven nights is indeed the maximum that we can push it, and thus a chain of seven links would be perfect for the job. The second question would be how long of a chain could we use for how many nights if we're permitted two cuts? What's the maximum number of nights we could go? Well, we will take a similar idea. So here is our theoretical maximum length chain for this situation. So this golden chain goes on and on and on. We don't know exactly how long, but let's suppose we make two cuts to the chain. We know that making cuts at the ends is not advantageous because that just leaves us with one free link and then one giant link. And we can't create a lot of different numbers with links like that. So we're not gonna make a cut at the end or super close to the end either. So for the picture, let's just say we make a cut here in the chain and we make our second cut here. That's going to leave us with the left tail of the chain, which is we don't know how long. It's going to leave us with a freestanding link, which we cut. It's going to leave us with this link in the middle that connects the links we cut. We'll have another freestanding link, and then we'll have that right tail of the chain. It will be advantageous to cut the chain so that none of the links have the same length. Again, that's going to help us create the largest amount of possible numbers with the links that we have. So let's suppose this link that remains on the left is the longest among them. Then we don't know how long this chain on the left is. Let's say its length is n, so it's comprised of n links. Then, from the remaining four pieces, we just need to be able to use those to count all the way from one 
up to n minus 1. If we can count up to n minus 1 using these remaining links, then we can do that, and then on the nth night, give the innkeeper this link of length n, and then from there, just use these again to count from 1 to n. Just like in the 7-link situation, we're able to count from 1 to 3 with the freestanding link and that chain with 2 links. And so the strategy that works is to use these two pieces to count from 1 to 3, then give the innkeeper this piece of 4, and then use these two pieces again to get from 4 up to 7. Now, how high could we count with these four pieces? Well, again, we would have to count combinations in order to figure out what the theoretical maximum is. The total number of ways we could pick pieces from this collection of four to give to the innkeeper is the maximum number of numbers that we could express with this collection of four chains. So doing that math again, we have to consider four pieces, choose one. We could give the innkeeper just one piece, but of course we could also give her two pieces. So we need to add four, choose two, and we need to add four, choose three, and of course four, choose four. That seems straightforward enough, except this is not going to be quite right. Unfortunately, we don't actually have four pieces of distinct length. Ideally, this piece and this piece have distinct lengths, but we know for sure that these are two freestanding links. There's nothing we can do about that. Where we make those cuts, we're forced to have these two freestanding links. Thus, this first number, four choose one, is counting the same possibility twice. It counts the fact that we could give the innkeeper this freestanding link, but it also counts the fact that we could give her this freestanding link, but that doesn't actually represent two different numbers. They both represent just one. If we label both of the freestanding links with one and then these two different links of different sizes, A and B, it's pretty easy to just count the total number of actually distinct possibilities. If we're only giving the innkeeper one link, we have three different choices for the link size. That is one, A, or B. If we're choosing two pieces to give the innkeeper, we could give her one and A, one and one, one and B, or A and B. Those are four distinct possibilities. Choosing three pieces to give the innkeeper is equivalent to choosing one piece to not give her, and since we have only three distinct lengths, that total number of ways is three. There are three ways we could pick a length to not give her. We could not give her A, and thus give her one, one, and B, and so on. So we get plus three, and then the total number of ways we could pick four pieces from the collection of four that we have, of course, is just one. Doing the summation here, we get 11. Now remember, these pieces need to be able to count from one all the way up to n minus one. That way we use them to count to n minus one, and then on the nth night, we give the innkeeper this link of size n, and then use these to count from n all the way up to whatever the maximum is. If n minus one then is 11, then n, of course, is 12. And so if our math is right, then using a chain of length 23, that's 12 plus 11, we should be able to satisfy the innkeeper for 23 nights. So here is a gold chain of 23 links. So we figured out that it should be possible to make just two cuts on this gold chain so that with the remaining pieces, we can represent all numbers from one to 23. I'll give you a minute to try to figure out which links we need to cut, and I'll give you the answer now. We would need to cut the fourth link, one, two, three, four, and the eleventh link, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This would thus give us a chain of length three, it would give us a free standing link, it would give us a chain of length one, two, three, four, five, six, it would give us a free standing link, and of course, a chain of length 12. With those distinct pieces, it's pretty easy to see how we could represent all numbers from 1 to 23. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then you can do a similar thing to get from 
12 all the way up to 23. So that's a bit about the classic puzzle of the golden chain. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and also tell me what your favorite Thanksgiving food is. Honestly, I'd have to go with turkey. It's classic. I like the meat. I like the gravy. You know, slap some mashed potato in that bad boy. It's incredible. Not infinite if you ain't really in the